Thank you for joining us today. I am Dr. Catherine Lefebvre, a neurologist in Saratoga Springs, New York, and I will be talking today with Dr. Luis Klebanov on behalf of Netscape Neurology. Uh, Dr. Klebanov is the Chief of General Neurology and the Vice Chair of Clinical Operations at Valcarnell Medical Center in New York, and we will be talking today about her recent viewpoint entitled, Modern Neurology Training is Failing Outpatients, published recently online uh, for JAMA Neurology. So Dr. Klebanov, uh, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really pleased to have this opportunity to expand more on this viewpoint. Wonderful. So um, maybe to start us off, tell us a little bit about your background and uh, why you wrote this article. So my background's a little bit odd to come to this position of being an outpatient general neurologist. My, my fellowship training is actually in critical care neurology, and I did critical care neurology almost exclusively for about 10 years, but my mentor always wanted us to have an outpatient practice. He thought it was very important for the critical care physicians to have exposure to their patients after they were discharged from the hospital, and he also thought it was important for us to have some exposure to more um, common neurological problems so we to give us a little bit of a balance with the uh, carnage we saw in the neurocritical care unit. Over time, I found that um, the demand was actually more for outpatient neurology. And I found that I actually really liked it and was quite good at it. And over the years, um, I became more and more of an outpatient general neurologist. I kind of look at my critical care uh, background as being you know, general neurology to the nth degree. And I think it's comfortable for the patients to know that whatever they come into the office with, um, I've seen it. <laughs> That's wonderful. And that is indeed a very unique perspective, but I can totally see how it would be very helpful to not just see patients at their worst day, right, or worst weeks, but really uh, see the, the recovery process as well. So, yeah, so tell, tell us a little bit. Well, you know, you mentioned a new viewpoint uh, with neurology becoming more subspecialized and many, many residents uh, being sort of steered towards fellowship training. What's the problem, or what do you see uh, as the as the problem that should be addressed with that with that uh, development? I mean, I, I'm a bit older in this in this uh, in my career, and when I started out, neurology was actually a specialty. And I find now that when we're interviewing resident applicants, the neurology residency is really a stepping point for them to get to a subspecialty training. The problem I see in that is that most patients on an outpatient basis who need to see a neurologist actually present with a kind of undifferentiated issue, and they're not sure what subspecials is to see. Um, in addition, as internal medicine physicians have less exposure to neurology in their training, they're really not sure who to send their patients to. For example, if an internist sees a patient who's having trouble walking, well, do they send them to movement disorder because it's, it's Parkinson's disease? Does the patient have demyelinating disease? Do they have a peripheral neuropathy? Do they have a brain tumor? You know, it's very hard for them to, to know how to direct the patient. And with access to neurology being so poor, patients could go to a movement disorder specialist, then a, then a peripheral neuropathy specialist, then a demyelinating specialist, and still not have an answer to why they're not walking well. A general neurologist can take the patient as a whole, do a good history, do a detailed exam, and be able to localize the problem and help out. And we might need to refer them to a subspecialist, but then we'll know the correct subspecialist to send them to. I think these are all very good points, as you said. I mean, early in the process, it's probably much more helpful for patients to, to be seen by, by a more generalist. So um, how is that affecting the residency programs or what, what would you think, what changes should be done to maybe get more people interested in, in general neurology and also get the training they need so they feel comfortable in practicing in that uh, specialty? So with residency training, especially in uh, metropolitan areas, the training is really focused on inpatient neurology. Um, in part because the, the hospital systems, frankly, need the residents to do the clinical work to take care of the patients. 
ambulatory care is often added on as an afterthought. Um, the real work is in inpatient training. And then when, when the residents graduate from the program, they're not comfortable taking care of outpatients because they really haven't done it. Um, they're not excited by taking care of uh, outpatients because they haven't seen the excitement and the, um, the satisfaction you get from taking care of a patient globally because that's not what they're exposed to. Um, yeah. you know, I think it's a real failure for the outpatients because again, most outpatients really have general neurological problems. They come in with headache, neck pain, back pain, dizziness, difficulty walking, difficulty thinking. Um, that's what I see day in, day out. That's actually what I like to see. Um, and our residents aren't getting that exposure. Yeah, so you made a very good point or interesting point that maybe over the years, as we have become more subspecialized as a field, there's been maybe a bit of a prestige question or, you know, neural general neurologists are possibly looked down a bit, and but also it's reflected in the compensation often being different for those uh, of us who do less procedures. So do you have any thoughts on that and possibly how to uh, change this? Yeah, I, I would say this, the fastest conversation stopper I have in an academic meeting is when people ask me what I do and I say I'm a general neurologist. Mm -hmm. The conversation stops and they usually ask the next person what they're interested in doing. Um, I think general neurology is sort of looked down on. Um, I think it's very difficult in an academic setting to get promoted as a general neurologist. You know, you're expected to publish, you're expected to do national, if not international talks. And as a general neurologist, it's kind of hard to get invited to do those things. Um, in addition, there's less compensation. If you're not doing a procedure, you're going to get less, less compensation. And, and that's, that's also, I think, a factor when patients, when uh, residents are choosing a subspecialty or considering choosing a subspecialty. Yeah, but I, I think one of the positive changes we have maybe seen in that realm is some of the uh, recent compensation changes so we can build more on time and uh, get a little bit more RVUs for longer visits. And I, I hope that that will be continued or we'll see a continued uh, change in the direction so we can actually build more for our time that we spend with patients. Yeah, so you've already touched on that, but maybe just ending a bit more on a, a positive note. I mean, why, why don't you tell us a little bit more about what you will, what excites you really about being a general neurologist and maybe might be um, reasons for people graduating the field now to consider this as a career option. I'm excited by every day coming to work. I never know what's going to come into the office, whether it's going to be a headache, a neck pain, a back pain, something very unusual or something really common. I love the ability to take care of multiple problems in one patient. Um, so that patients don't have to see multiple neurologists for their peripheral neuropathy, their dizziness, or their migraines. I find it incredibly satisfying to see patients over time. And as I get to know them, I'm often seeing family members. I have patients who I see, I started with one, I might see the spouse, I might see a child or two, I might see a friend of a kid. I like that experience. Um, to me, that's incredibly satisfying and gives me a sense of taking care of a complete patient. Wonderful. That was a wonderful testament. And, you know, I can maybe add my own personal story. So as you know, I think I was actually a movement specialist in academic medicine for about 10 years. And I made a bit of a pivot during the pandemic. And I would say, uh, so now I'm practicing in a community-based practice, general neurology. Um, and I'm very happy for my training that I feel did prepare me for this role. Um, and while I still maintain a strong focus in movement disorders, I have been enjoying uh, um, it for the same reasons that you mentioned. It's sort of nice when you're not just treating someone's Parkinson's disease, but also taking care of their migraines and their peripheral neuropathy, because it's hard to separate it all. And people are not excited by seeing uh, two or three specialists for just their neurology issues and adding to the time and uh, financial burdens. And, you know, uh, the last point I would also like to say, uh, it can also be helpful for our own burnout issues, right? Because, uh, you know, having that comparison 
person of being a subspecialist, seeing many people with very complex problems and being maybe the third or fourth or fifth neurologist, you know, seeing someone in their uh, disease process, it, it can also be very challenging seeing complex patient time after time after time your entire day. So I think the mixture of uh, seeing patients with a variety of disease, some with very serious illness, some with uh, things that we can uh, really do a lot to help people, um, I think um, has also increased my own satisfaction uh, in my in my work uh, life balance and uh, in my work day. So I think, um, yeah, I just want to say thank you for bringing um, attention to this very important issue. Yes, um, there is a need for subspecialization in neurology, but we should definitely not forget our background. And I really um, applaud your previous mentor who made a big point of um, really um, advocating for a broad training and broad practice for everyone. I think I think uh, neurology and our patients can only benefit. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. I think there's a real importance and a real role for the general neurologist to, to play. Yeah, well, thank you so much. It was really fun talking to you. And I think we made a uh, number of really good points. Um, I hope to see you soon and, and catch up in person. That would be great. Thank you so much. Good health, everybody. Goodbye.